Mr. Philippe Ovino, from representative from uh, ITUR, is connected with us uh, remotely, so we will be able to see him uh, connected remotely, and he will present actually um, the activities of ITUR very shortly. So, with your kind permission, I would like to start uh, directly from uh, Philippe. So, Philippe, if you are ready, then I'll suggest that we start with you, and then uh, I will uh, give the floor to Yaroslav and uh, uh, Frederick after uh, taking uh, some questions and answers for you. So, Philippe, floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Christina. Uh, could you hear me well? I hope so. Uh, so, I can see that uh, you have started to put the, the slides I have prepared for this event so on the screen, so thank you for that. And uh, I would like also to thank uh, our host for organizing uh, as a facility for me to present remotely uh, what we are doing in ITUR. I see also in the room a uh, uh, number of uh, colleagues uh, that are there and uh, I would appreciate if uh, they wanted to add uh, some comments to the information I'm going to provide to you. Uh, so, uh, to start with, um, we have, uh, uh, I, I am actually counselor for ITUR Study Group 1. This is a study group dealing with uh, spectrum management. And uh, inside the study group one, we have a working party, 1C, dealing with uh, spectrum monitoring. Uh, this group has uh, produced for a number of years now uh, a worldwide recognized reference on spectrum monitoring, which is the uh, spectrum monitoring handbook. Uh, the latest uh, and, and fifth edition was uh, uh, published in uh, 2011. And uh, one of the uh, chapter of that uh, handbook addressed directly uh, the topic of uh, non-ionizing radiation measurements. So you would find in this uh, chapter of the handbook a lot of valuable information uh, related to this uh, topic. In particular, uh, this uh, chapter 5.6 uh, explains the uh, near limits and the exposure caution. It also uh, provides um, detail on the instruments that uh, are to be used for near measurements uh, for different services, uh, different equipment, uh, probes, meter, but also a different type of antennas that have to be used for carrying out these measurements. The next part of this uh, chapter deal with the measurement procedures, which how to apply how to use the equipment, how to use uh, the instruments to, to perform the measurements. And uh, uh, again, for different uh, services, mobile broadcasting, etc. And it also uh, contained uh, an important uh, part to uh, provide the uh, reporting methods on the measurements that are carried out. This is also important to be able to understand the measurements and the results that are uh, obtained. Um, after uh, the uh, publication of this uh, uh, new edition of the handbook in 2011, uh, ITUR, in particular uh, 1C, uh, has been involved uh, in uh, providing or uh, in reviewing the uh, WHO monograph and in providing comments related to uh, EMF measurements. And thanks to uh, Mr. Mazar, who is with you, I see, who has uh, coordinated these uh, efforts in ITUR, and we were then able to provide uh, comments uh, through ITUT to uh, the WHO. Uh, in doing that, we have um, received, uh, we have consulted the other ITUR study groups dealing with the, uh, uh, the radio communication services, in particular the terrestrial services uh, that are dealt with in ITUR study group 5, and uh, the three, uh, sorry, the four working parties in that ITUR study group five, uh, in particular uh, working party 5D, that is uh, dealing directly with uh, IMT, uh, has uh, uh, indicated uh, the following uh, comments, that the exposure limits should be established based on scientific evidence endorsed by the uh, WHO, 
and uh, also that the uh, establishment of restrictive exposure limits they may impact the deployment of wireless networks. So we have uh, acknowledged those comments from the experts on the uh, terrestrial radio communication services and provided that to uh, the colleagues in ITUT. Um, and then uh, it was recognized in 2016 that, uh, so if you could put on the screen the, yes, the, the slide, uh, 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 yeah, this one, thank you. So uh, we have, um, it was recognized in uh, 2016 that the expert group on spectrum monitoring, Working Party 1C, was best placed to uh, uh, carry out further studies on uh, EMF measurements to assess human exposure. And a new ITUR study question has been developed to that aim. Uh, this uh, study question, uh, you can see the details on the screen. Um, the purpose is, is really to um, look at the, um, uh, again, the, the, the best way to carry out measurement of EMF, uh, mainly from a radio communication station. But it was uh, recognized that uh, this uh, study um, would not uh, look at uh, the measurement of emission from devices that are uh, um, to be to be um, uh, portable wireless devices uh, that are for use close to the head or to the body. So uh, this is outside the scope of this question. So you can see the two uh, main aspects of the question. So again, the measurement techniques and uh, second is uh, how to provide the best results. So in uh, answer to this question, if you go to the next slide, uh, so the, this question should be uh, completed uh, by uh, next year, 2018. So we have had so far uh, one meeting of Working Party 1C in uh, June uh, 2017, this year. Uh, and uh, the uh, a new report has started to be developed to answer this question. Uh, this is uh, the, the report that you can see here on, on, the, on the screen. And uh, it contains already some preliminary draft information on measurement, referring to all radio communication wireless stations. And again here, accepting the portable uh, wireless devices. So uh, it also contains some example of a uh, way to report using, for instance, graphical um, uh, information, but also contains some uh, example of equipment that uh, could be used now to um, uh, measure um, EMF. Uh, so again, this question uh, is targeted to be completed next year. So if you go to the next slide, you would see that we have put in place a correspondence activity to accelerate the studies on this question uh, with a target to uh, complete the report next June during the uh, next Working Party 1C meeting. You can see the plan date on the screen. And this correspondence activity is uh, currently um, under the chairmanship of uh, Dr. Mazar, who is with you, I see, and uh, uh, we uh, hope to make good progress through this correspondence activity, a correspondence group that is open to all ITUR membership. Uh, so if you need further detail, you can see the uh, mailing list here and the, um, the, the SharePoint that is available, which contain information in that regard. And uh, I'm sure that Mr. Mazar, who is with you, will be able to provide additional details for those who are interested. So with that, I thank you very much for your attention and I stay connected if you have some questions. Thank you. Many, Many thanks, uh, Philippe, for uh, the interesting presentation on ITR activities. I see that uh, Mr. Massar has actually some comments. <laughs> so, can you give a... Good, good morning. And good morning, uh, Philippe. Thank you for mentioning all our activities. A question. Last month, we had in Rome a workshop of ITUD on EMF. Today, we are here in Warsaw. My question, when will be the ITUR workshop on EMF? Thank you. Well, thank you for the question, Dr. Mazar. Uh, uh, currently, there is no plans to organize a workshop on EMF, but uh, any uh, suggestion are welcome, and uh, we may consider that in the steering committee of ITR Study Group One, and see what could when could be the good opportunity to uh, get uh, uh, information on this uh, activity. 
I think uh, the next meeting in June will be a very busy meeting for us. Uh, not only because we have uh, one CE meeting, but also we have other working parties in study group one meeting in parallel. As you know, uh, we try to do that to have all experts on spectrum management involved at the same time. Uh, so we have a very busy meeting, uh, but we will, uh, if, if there is such a need and uh, I see there are some interest to have a workshop, we may consider that uh, for a future meeting of, of one thing. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments on Philip's presentation? Okay. So I see there are no other comments, and then in which case I would uh, thank Philip for uh, his participation, and then I would suggest that uh, uh, we move on uh, to our next uh, speaker. That will be Mr. Yaroslav Ponder. So Yaroslav is basically a Tom, so I don't need uh, to present him because I'm sure that everyone knows him. Here you go. You can use this or otherwise the D pointer, as you prefer. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As Christina already said, uh, today my intervention uh, is a great pleasure for me, not only because of this that I'm at home, but uh, more uh, of the pleasure is to see so many people interested in this topic, uh, not only from my home country, but also from so many uh, countries. Uh, I was re requested to contribute to this uh, workshop um, in uh, my capacity uh, uh, representing the development sector. Uh, I'm regional director for, for Europe, uh, spinning up the all activities uh, of the ITU uh, in the 43 countries. Uh, and also the EMF uh, is one of the topics which uh, um, is emerging as the uh, one uh, of uh, the challenges. Uh, and being perceived uh, as the prerequisite for the fast deployment for the 5G. Uh, therefore, it's, it was also our great pleasure to see uh, that uh, in the, and one month um, ago, uh, in the review of the uh, all documentation and mandates of the ITU, and the EMF has been placed very high on the agenda of the all member states, updating the uh, ITUD, a mandate in the field of the uh, EMF, uh, also defining the study group and question in this uh, field. Uh, however, uh, also, and what uh, is the most important, ensuring uh, that uh, we are uh, remaining converged in the building community and addressing this issue as uh, the issue which is not only related to the uh, 5G deployment, uh, but is a uh, long-term uh, aspect uh, to, uh, to be addressed by the global community. Therefore, we are remaining guided by the uh, all outcomes uh, of the uh, PP, um, but also by the other resolutions of the T sector. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned already, and taking a look at the um, one of the mechanisms the ITUD is providing to the member states and uh, to study and uh, the questions through the uh, question 7.2 uh, on the strategies and policies uh, concerning human exposure and uh, to electromagnetic uh, fields. Uh, we're lucky that uh, the work of the four years uh, period of study arrived to the end and uh, we're able uh, to launch uh, just at the uh, WTDC, the re final report of the uh, study group question um, uh, 7.2, uh, which uh, encompasses a vast uh, range of the um, studied uh, questions uh, via this community. And the study group of the ITUD uh, mainly focuses on the um, policies, uh, regulatory um, uh, aspects, but also on the best way uh, how to assist the countries in their endeavor uh, to uh, address uh, the emerging challenges uh, related to the EMF. And therefore, in this report, uh, not only you will find uh, the references uh, to the international uh, agreements, uh, limits, 
uh, but also you will find several case studies of those uh, countries which uh, have been contributing. Uh, but uh, the good news is that and the more countries express the willingness to could contribute in the future uh, even more. Uh, so in follow-up to the development conference, currently uh, the study groups of the ITUD are uh, setting up the work um, programs uh, and therefore all member states are uh, and stakeholders are kindly requested and invited to considering um, to contribute to this work um, beyond WTDC in order to make sure that the uh, challenge of the MF is properly understood first. Uh, secondly, uh, that the challenge of the EMF uh, is also um, uh, very well documented in terms of the best practices and the challenges. We've heard already today several uh, different examples of Australia. Uh, this is exactly this type of the uh, flow and transfer of the know-how which we need in order to advance and the international uh, cooperation and advance the work of the other sectors of the R and uh, the uh, TSB, uh, which ultimately uh, is uh, aiming at uh, setting the standards uh, as the uh, formal reference point uh, in, the, in this uh, area. Uh, of course, uh, this includes engagement with the uh, different international partners and uh, therefore and the ITUD uh, study group uh, is always uh, keen uh, to engage and uh, involve in the deliberations and the uh, different international uh, bodies uh, in order to ensure uh, that uh, the all aspects of the international standardization uh, are taken into account. Of course, at the level of the operations, and now I'm coming to the uh, this what is happening at the, at the uh, implementation level and the development bureau uh, has been requested instructed and uh, to assist the countries uh, not only uh, assembling the uh, the best practices uh, but having the knowledge uh, of the challenges related to the emf uh, also to go uh, to the field uh, and to talk to those countries uh, which maybe uh, have still uh, the challenges of uh, different kind uh, not only technical, but uh, uh, sometimes uh, political um, or uh, sometimes decision-wise, and they cannot make the progress. And therefore, uh, the development sector uh, is uh, in collaboration with the other sectors, uh, is always uh, keen to provide uh, this assistance uh, to the others. Um, of course, uh, the resolutions, uh, it's always boring to talk about the resolutions, uh, but this is important uh, for making sure that the workflow uh, on these topics uh, are well understood. Uh, the resolution also uh, clearly defined the scope of this, what is uh, expected from the uh, ITUD study group uh, and how uh, it, this work should be connected uh, to the work of the study group uh, 5 uh, and also of the uh, work which we just heard um, which was um, updated, uh, where we were updated by Philip. Uh, so, as you see, uh, this creates a quite convergent uh, way of the working uh, in the uh, future. Uh, but let's take a look uh, at the European level. Uh, the EMF uh, arrived uh, uh, recently uh, as the challenge identified uh, last year at the Regional Initiative um, uh, for Europe meeting regulatory uh, conference, sorry, this was this year, I'm thinking already in uh, 2018 uh, terms. Uh, so Serbia and Republic of uh, Poland uh, clearly expressed that EMF uh, is a, a challenge at the regional level and it requires uh, some um, particular action calling for the uh, expert uh, meeting, um, uh, which was held uh, last uh, week, uh, last uh, month. Uh, in Rome. Uh, we s in order to collect uh, the good practices and um, we uh, circulated the questionnaire, collected um, uh, nine uh, case studies from the different uh, countries listed uh, on, the, uh, on the slide. 
uh, addressing diverse aspects of the uh, EMF. And it's my great pleasure to uh, share with you and that the final report of this uh, meeting has been, uh, after the consultations with the all experts have been released uh, yesterday. And let me thank to the, those who are in the room, but also those who are, are following us uh, for their comments ensuring uh, that also all uh, aspects are reflected in the uh, report. Uh, of course, um, the, uh, there are several uh, takeaways uh, from this uh, exercise. Uh, we concluded uh, some, some uh, important uh, takeaways uh, for the 5G rollout, um, in particular for those countries uh, where uh, the limits are on very low uh, level. Uh, where uh, the cases uh, have been uh, notified uh, that this potentially will slow down the rollout of the uh, 5G networks uh, and uh, urgent uh, act action is uh, necessary. Um, also, it was, um, uh, it was concluded that uh, significant work uh, needs to be uh, still uh, done in order to uh, make sure uh, that the measurement uh, is uh, carried out in more harmonized way uh, across the countries, what will uh, help also uh, the private sector and uh, to roll out uh, the infrastructure. Uh, also, it was noted that uh, in some countries, EMF becomes an issue uh, for the regulators, uh, being used as the competitive advantage uh, for the incumbent, um, using uh, the EMF uh, to get the competitive uh, advantage. Um, we also had several uh, comments uh, at the uh, meeting uh, pointing to uh, the issue of the facilitation and creating uh, the enabling environment uh, for, uh, the, uh, for the rollout of the uh, 5G uh, and in particular of how to deal with the EMF. And uh, several countries were uh, demonstrating, um, showing uh, their electronic systems as the transparency in this process is one of the key uh, one is measurement, but the second one is sharing uh, the uh, information with those uh, affected uh, population groups uh, in order to ensure uh, that uh, there is no misunderstandings in, uh, in the case. Um, so I invite you all uh, to go to the website. I think it's also the report is posted on the website of this workshop and uh, to take a look uh, at the main takeaways. Uh, but uh, just to remain coherent, uh, also the group uh, concluded uh, on the uh, way forward. Uh, so the group didn't conclude on the next workshop of the ITUR, uh, but we, uh, of course, welcome uh, very much uh, these uh, proposals and to ensure that uh, the topic remains uh, also discussed from the different uh, perspectives, um, but uh, also the community clearly uh, was, was suggesting uh, to uh, provide the outcomes of this work to the study group uh, 5 and to the ITUR uh, work. Uh, also, uh, um, also was looking uh, for the mechanism how to ensure uh, that these, do these communities are talking to each other uh, and uh, that um, they are building uh, upon uh, all outcomes generated uh, through any kind of the meetings like uh, that. Uh, of course, um, the, this is, an, um, a, in addition, the group uh, proposed and uh, to consider to enrich uh, and to add the next layer uh, of the uh, ITU interactive transmission maps, um, adding uh, the EMF uh, layer, in particular starting from these countries, uh, which uh, are collecting the, those information and reflecting uh, on their uh, systems. Um, also, in addition, um, it was requested to, uh, and to hold uh, the meeting with the WHO uh, and uh, pursue the co uh, contribution uh, to the relevant uh, WHO meetings. Um, also support uh, the ITUT EMF uh, guide uh, in view of the 5G uh, rollout uh, and uh, the others. So dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is uh, what um, uh, I would like to 
and present uh, to you as the work of the ITUD, highlighting that the ITUD major role in this uh, aspect is to um, provide the platforms for sharing uh, the know-how, uh, but the more importantly, to assist the countries in uh, uh, solving their uh, real challenges. And so we are very often uh, working hand in hand uh, with the countries uh, and making sure that uh, this work is also not forgotten, uh, but uh, it contributes and enriches the meetings like uh, this with the best uh, practices and experiences uh, collected. Thank you very much for your attention. Many thanks, uh, Yaroslav. Do you have uh, any questions for uh, Yaroslav? Anything that you would like to ask now? So in that case, I'll, uh, I'll suggest that uh, we move to our next uh, presenter. So um, okay, I'm, I'm surrounded by the Polish speakers, so they are all at home, but I'm very pleased actually uh, to introduce Frederick Lewicki. So Frederick is uh, the chairman of Working Party One of ITT Study Group 5. Um, he's a great expert on EMF, and uh, I'll uh, leave up to him to present the activities of uh, ITT Study Group 5. Thank you very much, Christina. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I will have pleasure to present you some information concerning ITUT activity in this field. Uh, And slides are missing. But still, I see that uh, no, no, maybe <laughs> there is, how to say, not all slides here. There is missed all not odd slides. So it is first, then it is third, five, and seven. So Because you see, this one is missed. Why it is cancelled? This is in Polish. No, 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 no. Uh, this one. This but it, but it, then it will be hidden. Uh, uh, no. It should be. Oh, yes, now. Thank you. Now it should work. I don't know. Yes, now it is working. Okay. So I am sorry for this slight delay, but it was a small technical problem. So as concerning ITUT activity, it was for many years. So up to now, we have enforced 10 recommendations uh, concerning all fields of EMF measurements, monitorings, uh, Many of these recommendations uh, have additional tools like uh, software, like mobile application, like supplements. Uh, so uh, in the last time, as concerning 5G, it was agreed supplement 9, 5G technology and human exposure to EMF. And uh, in all of these recommendations are freely available on the ITU website, you can see here the link. Uh, above there are some examples of uh, our main uh, website. Uh, I would like shortly to present some of these recommendations. Here you see five first of them. Uh, for example, K52 recommendation is uh, combining tens of equations, so it is very difficult to, to, to use them but there is software, K52 calculator, which combine all these uh, equations and made, make much easier implementation of this recommendation. In recommendation K70, there is software EMF estimator, which in more detail and more accurately allow for calculation of exposure levels around any uh, transmitting stations, including base stations. In recommendation K90, you can have software EMF 
FACDC, uh, which allow to calculate exposure levels around power supply lines. We know that also in uh, uh, telecommunication facility we have power supply lines, so it all, uh, allow to calculate exposure levels to calculate overall exposure. Uh, recommendation KHD3 is widely used in many countries because it uh, shows some information concerning monitoring of electromagnetic fields. Uh, in many countries there is implemented systems which allow via internet to general public to look for uh, exposure levels around uh, their uh, homes, around uh, their cities. So uh, it is very good for communication with general public to, to give them information how, uh, which exposure level they may be expected. Uh, recommendation K91 uh, is uh, like mother recommendation dealing with electromagnetic fields. In this recommendation, all subjects are covered, giving references also to IEC standards, to, to ICNIRP uh, guidelines, to IEEE guidelines. So if you have any, any needs to, to, to deal with EMF, the first choice is to go to this recommendation and then you will find references to required uh, standards or recommendations. Uh, also in this recommendation as supplements we have uh, some softwares, also EMF guide, mobile application, which was presented uh, shortly by Mike uh, during uh, first session. Uh, also, the supplement dealing with 5G is uh, uh, a part of this recommendation. Uh, you have possibility to see this triangle uh, two times earlier. I would like only to notice that uh, 5G, uh, from EMF point of view, cover different type of application, different type of systems, so of also different impact on human exposure to electromagnetic fields, and it is important issue for us. Uh, as concerning timetable, it is also mentioned, but it is important for us to know that all current implementation of, of 5G are only some part of 5G, only some features of 5G. Uh, full standard will be published in late 20, 2019, so full uh, application will be uh, in 2020, uh, and in this time we will have possibility to see all uh, advantages of this new uh, system. Uh, very important issue concerning uh, electromagnetic fields are exposure limits. In this table you can see uh, exposure limits in first two columns uh, uh, recommended by World Health Organization, WHO. Uh, they are ICNIRP limits and IEEE limits and you can uh, compare them, they are very similar and even in next year they will be identical. In last column, you can see limits in some countries, much more restrictive limits. This example is exactly for Poland. And you can see that, for example, as concerning uh, power density, these limits in uh, frequency ranges used for mobile communication are 20 to 100 times more restrictive than this recommended by WHO. So it is, uh, it is really, really difficult sometimes to, to implement uh, uh, mobile system uh, in Poland. Uh, from other sides, uh, here there are information concerning some results of measurements. In this uh, table and chart, there are presented results of measurements taken in France by, by French agency, independent from mobile operators, made in, during three hours, in more than 3,000 different measurement points, and you can see that uh, changes, especially on this uh, right picture, the changes between years are not very big. And uh, in this table, there is uh, more important information that in more than 80% of location, exposure level is lower than one volt per meter. And only in less than 1% of location, the exposure level is higher than six volt per meter. So if we compare this with these limits, from ICNIRP limits or IEEE limits, they are far below the limits. But if we compare them with uh, limits, more restrictive limits like in Poland, it is a problem because uh, seven volt per meter, six volt per meter are very close one to another. So of course, implementation of 5G will be much more difficult in some, in some countries. So this idea 
to harmonize exposure limits around the world because people are the same around the world is very, very good. And I hope that it will be possible also in such countries like Poland. Now coming more detailly to 5G. As you can hear, the, uh, one of very, very important news will be smart antennas. Smart antennas means antennas with very narrow beams directed directly to the user and transmitting only during connection. So if will be no connection, there will be no transmission. There will be no transmission in the uh, area outside the user. So from exposure point of view, it will be a really, really interesting and important uh, thing. Mm, however, uh, we have to take into account that these antennas, from technical point of view, are very sophisticated, require very big uh, computational power, and uh, up to now they are very costly. So for implementation of such systems, we have to wait. But of course, it is a future of mobile communication. And we, it, this will really allow to substantially reduce exposure in the environment. We have also uh, heard that uh, 5G networks uh, will combine of all type of cells. There will be macro cells with very, very wide range because for, for sure there is no any reason in rural areas to, to implement small cells. But in some dense uh, areas, small cells are a really, really good uh, solution. Uh, but we have to take into account that uh, at least in, in, uh, uh, during implementation phase, uh, 5G systems will be work operating in parallel with existing one. So at least in, on the beginning, exposure level have to uh, be a little bit higher. But uh, if, uh, during development of 5G mobile system, uh, there are two aspects taken into account that was not taken into account during development of earliest uh, systems. First, of, uh, first one is to, to have uh, exposure uh, levels as low as possible. And second one is advanced sleep mode. It is mainly from uh, energy efficiency point of view, but also with very big impact from exposure point of view. This advanced sleep mode means that during low traffic, there will be very low exposure. If will be high traffic, then will be exposure that is required. Currently, difference between uh, high traffic and low traffic from exposure point of view and energy efficiency is very small difference. In uh, advanced sleep mode, it will, go, it will give us possibility to make very big difference. So during uh, no activity, there will be really no uh, exposure. So also from regula uh, regulation point of view, it is important not to consider only peak exposure, but also average exposure. Uh, in Polish regulation, for example, peak exposure is taken into account. And in almost all regulation, there is requirement to make calculation, for example, taken into account the highest possible power of all transmitting equipment. But if it will be, how to say, not operating all the time with this high power, uh, output power, it is no reason to take it into account. So it is also for consideration from regulatory point of view. Uh, coming back a little bit to small cells. Small cell will be, will be even now they are used, but uh, in 5G they will be used on much higher scale. So many, in many, many locations they will be uh, apply, uh, applied small cells. Um, so they will be much closer to, to general public and many people may think that it is dangerous. But even now, current experience, measurements, prove that uh, exposure from small cells are much lower than from macro cells. Because as you know, all handsets, all user uh, equipment have uh, uh, adaptive power control. So they uh, emitting output power on as low level as uh, possible to establish reliable communication. So uh, if we are close to base station, the radiation is very, very low. If you are far away, 
radiation is much higher. So small base station allow to us to have very small distance to base station, so also output power may be very, very low. Uh, the next issue are sharing infrastructure. You know that uh, there will be required much more base station than now. So to share them between operators is a very good idea. But it may cause some opinions that if you, for example, have two operators, that it will be double exposure level. So here is comparison on this chart on the left side as a function of distance. This colored line uh, represents uh, exposure given by one and second operator. They have three frequency bands, the same output powers, but different uh, and, uh, uh, located on the same tower, but on different heights. And you can see that maxima and minima of exposure are located in different places. So exposure is not double higher. It is higher, but not double. So sharing infrastructure is a good idea if we also take into account this consideration and make proper calculation, it will be really, really efficient from an economical point of view and also good from a human exposure point of view. On the right charts, you can see horizontal cross-section of the same case and you can see base station A, base station B separately and in the bottom, both together. So only very, in very, very close area around uh, tower, there is substantial increase. But because this, uh, how to say, location uh, maxima and minima in different distances, uh, the increase of total overall exposure is not so big, is not double. The last thing which I would like to, to consider is Internet of, of Things or machine to machine. Uh, it is expected that many devices will be connected to internet and of course most of them will be connected wireless because it is much cheaper, much convenient. Uh, so uh, we can expect that number of radiating sorties uh, will increase dramatically. But almost all these dev devices will be very low power. Uh, it is not required for, for long coverage, for, for how to say, for... Um, transmitting many information, so they will communicate on event base, periodically. Uh, in many cases, even it will be requirement that they will be battery operating. So no one would like to charge this battery every day or every month. Usually they will have to uh, operate using one battery for one year or, or many years, or even the all, whole uh, life of uh, these uh, devices sensors and uh, different type of sensors, measurements equipment, for example, electricity e e measurement, uh, water measurement, and so on. So we can say that uh, power uh, or, or emissions from such devices will be very low, periodical, and in overall exposure assessment, they may be even neglected. So coming to the conclusion, the reduction of the impact of uh, human exposure to radio frequency electromagnetic field is one of key issues taken into account during this system development. It is very important that on the development stage we are taken into account this, uh, this goal, this task. But of course in first stage of imp implementation we can expect that some increase of exposure level uh, have to be. But Finally, exposure to EMF uh, will be, uh, should be similar to current one or maybe even lower. It depends on the, uh, how to say, uh, growing needs. People are using mobile devices more frequently, so it is difficult to predict now. And uh, the last one is that ITU is very active in sharing this information, knowledge, tools, uh, concerning uh, assessment of human exposure to RA. RFEMF, so I encourage you to, to go to our website and to, to use our recommendations. Uh, as I said, they are freely available. Thank you very much for your attention. I see there is already a question. Very good. <laughs>
Thank you again. One moment. Thank you again. Okay, Frederick, you spoke about uh, sharing, infrastructure sharing, and you spoke about uh, mainly sharing the same must, but in Canada, United Kingdom, Israel, we obligate not only to share the same generator and must, not only to share the same antenna, but also to share the same frequencies. Not, now, what will happen if in Poland you will share, two operators will share actively also frequencies? How will it uh, influence the EMF? Thank you. Thank you, Chaim. Very good question. Even in, in Poland we have such situation. My operator, Orange, have sharing infrastructure with T-Mobile, even some frequencies. Uh, but of course, frequencies are divided in some bands, even in broadband bands. So if you take into account these different frequencies, uh, the minima and maxima will be located in different uh, locations, even if you are using the same antennas. So sharing is a uh, is very, very good idea, of course, with uh, uh, some bigger advantages, smaller advantages, depending on the scale of this sharing. But uh, it uh, generally gives uh, so many uh, advantages, also eco from an economical point of view, that I think this will be really, really growing, uh, uh, growing um, idea and will be widely implemented.